Good evening and welcome everyone to another lively and fantastic edition of Friday with Friends. Today's friend, my actual very, very good friend and someone whom I respect a lot, BK Mita, usually in Miami, but now in the mountains of India. Hi, Mita. Hello, so nice to see you, hear you. Yes. It's, it's good to see. I'm so happy for technology that it gives us the ability to connect in an easier way. You know, we, you know, I'd like to always think that we have this connection that we could mentally connect through thought, but technology shows us that what we can do just by being present. So I'm here in Delray Beach, Florida. You're somewhere in the mountains of northern India, and we're connecting in the present time. Glad to be here. Absolutely. And I look forward to the conversation because I always feel conversation, you end up as a new person or, you know, you stumble upon something new, which you don't notice <laughs> if you don't have that conversation. <laughs> that's true. And, and I think you used the right verb, stumble. And because that's how it works and you have to trust that stumbling. So the title uh, for today's session is seeing but not seeing see but don't see and, you know that sounds it sounds really deep and it sounds cool but what does it mean <laughs> i was thinking you know if i'm quietly thinking about it you know i could come up with a lot of positive things but when i'm in action and when i'm actually seeing things i think i end up seeing what i should Seeing and absorbing, maybe, or seeing and constantly concluding or judging. And that is what I don't like when I'm no. in action and when I'm in oh. that. You know, that, that's, that's also my experience. And I think it's all of our experience. And so just being, so that's a bit of transparency that you've already spoken of. So evidently that's a part of the cure is this self-transparency where i i begin to look so i see things and i guess what you're saying is that i see what's happening on the outside but i like the word that you used absorb that i stop absorbing it so if i know that if that makes such common sense and anyone can understand it why do i absorb it Hmm. I don't know. I could come up with some not so good reasons. <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe I have a pattern of, or, you know, a habit of evaluating or judging or concluding. And maybe that's not always healthy, but I tend to, you know. Um, Absolutely. I don't know. What could be the satisfaction of uh, doing that? That's a good question, but I do end up doing that. Well, it, it's all of us. And I, I, that's the whole process is that perfection is not even something that I'm even slightly familiar with, only as an ideal. And I, I might be able to conceive of, of what, not absorbing or not being a certain way is like, but my, and I kind of believe that I'm doing that because I'm, I'm reading about it and I love it. And I fill myself up with the zest of that. And then when the opportunity comes for me to put that new vision into action, my success rate is not what I'd like it to be. And so then I may judge myself harshly for doing that. Do you find that that's an experience that you have as well? Uh, myself is one thing. And I was thinking when I'm moving with people and, you know, seeing situations, conversations, listening to so many stories, everybody has so many stories or so many opinions to share. I'm extending that pattern to others. Uh, 
I mean, not not so deeply, but I still feel it's a wasteful mm. uh, exercise I involve myself in. And How in does my it make quiet you time, feel when you when you recognize that you're you may be recognizing it in someone else, and and maybe that word judging comes up. How does that make you feel when you recognize that you're doing that? What I've also observed is when I'm amongst other people, you know, I observe what I'm doing and maybe, you know, that I should not be doing. But I feel it doesn't make a difference to anybody else what I'm judging. Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody's so engrossed in their story. That's their true. Their that views. is so true. But at the end of it, when I'm sitting in silence or by myself, I'm like, why did I get involved in that wasteful exercise? It didn't make a difference to anybody. Everybody's happy with all. their opinion, their story. Absolutely. But for myself, um, I feel why, you know, and I see so much more scope of uh, not getting involved at that level. Mm-hmm. And so the so that that brings up the old adage that we learn a lot more about we learn a lot more in our failures than we do by our successes, and and if that's true, that means that's part of the stepping stone. So why am I getting upset that I have a failure? Oh, that's a good question. Because actually, you know, when we were talking about this and I was thinking about what is it that I am, uh, you know, I don't know the word you use. Uh, I think you use what is an area of self-progress you are uh, working on or looking at. And I thought that is so nice that I have identified it. Because when I am, you know, not involved with so many people, I am not aware of that tendency of mine. And that also made me think of uh, what I could replace it with, actually. Because if mm. I am not, I'm not getting uh, involved at, if I'm not getting into stories and judging and concluding, um, I could be involved in, you know, like the other things that I hear and I understand to be more valuable as, uh, reinforcing something good, what other person is saying. Or many times you don't even have to do that. Just be a good listener. And I was thinking of all the lovely conversations you had with so many guests about listening. How listening is such a powerful thing, not an ordinary thing, you know. So just looking at what I need to work on made me arrive at so many other good things I could be doing if I replace that uh, tendency, and that made me feel good. <laughs> you know, so you, you know, you're just simply saying that there are more options. You know, you uh -huh. you have more options. You have a toolkit that's bigger than the old way because we've gotten this way. We've accepted patterns and behaviors from our parents, our culture, without question. Uh -huh. You know, without question, and, and plus my own innate sense of being, and as I I find for myself that as I don't have the result that I'd like, it's an untasty result. My first tendency is always, you know, it must be the other guy, the other guy's <laughs> doing something or or this or that, and then once I've exhausted all those possibilities, that I find that I remember something. Someone once told me, says, wherever you go, there you are. You know, it means mm. that I can change my friends. I can change my relationships. But the same patterns continue to emerge. I've noticed that, especially in terms of you could, with relationships, that mm -hmm. I feel it's certain types of this type of person. It's them that the reason that I feel this way. And then I recognize I'm attracting that same personality type later on because well craig i haven't i haven't really seen it you know i haven't learned yet and so then finally after some practice of years to develop a little bit of mercy on the self of that i'm not just what i think that's ideal but it's mostly what i'm feeling i i really judge life by 
what I'm feeling. And mm -hmm. I like good feelings and I don't like bad feelings. And so mm -hmm. that's what's teaching me to not judge myself so harshly. I think that's really the, the end. Is that it's, that's where the problem is. It's how I look at myself and judge myself. Like I was saying to you, I hold you in highest regard, you know, and it's not, I'm not trying to do that. It's just natural because, and I'm not making up a story. I'm not sugarcoating it. I actually see who you are and it's such a good thing and it should be shared more and more. And I'm surprised that you don't have the same vision of you that I have of you. Well, well, the only reason I would uh, not have that vision of me at times is because of what I observe, um, you know, for yes. that time. But, you know, when you said that, I feel that is also a default I hold because of my spiritual practice. Um, I would say of even uh, strangers. But what I observe that maybe amongst the ones I know more, who are not strangers, I tend to lose it at that level. Mm, Maybe not completely lose it, but no. you know, it gets mixed up. And the other person may not know it, but I know that there is a better way of being, uh, which I have uh, diluted. And maybe it's not a judgment, it's an observation, right? And somewhere you have to be accountable, right? Okay, I'm not judging and I'm not but I am, it's, it, there has to be some tracking. Of course, some you know, it's really, a, it's, it's vital to be accountable, but, you know, not with a stick, you know, just, and if you look at the, the people who have a spiritual practice that you truly admire, what they have in common is their personalities may be very different, but they don't have a stick, you know, mm. they, they're, they inspire with their vision. Mm -hmm. They don't have a vision of seeing what's wrong. They see what is good. And that seems so much e easier and less burdensome that way. But uh, something that you said to hit me is that it's the ones that are close to me, you know, the people that I interact with whether they have a spiritual practice or whether they don't have a spiritual practice similar to mine, that these are the ones that ignite these undesirable feelings in me, mostly because of how I'm viewing them, you know? And so I've realized that I don't even, I don't want that anymore. It doesn't matter that, that I'm right or that they're right or who's right. None of that matters. That's very beautiful, Craig Bhai. And actually, I was thinking uh, spirituality has also taught me it's not about being right or wrong, right? Looking at things as one way and another way, right? We are, I would say, an old pattern or a deeper pattern. Or, you know, I don't know whether it's a cultural thing or somehow we had learned to have things as right and wrong and good and bad. Uh, but spirituality at one level diffuses those options and, you know, sort of allows you to just look, okay, this was one way, this is another way, maybe there is a third way, or maybe there's a spiritual way, and, mm. and perhaps that's how you become gentle, or you at least allow allow all these other things to exist, rather than, you know, trying to resist. So that's also a beauty of, I think, a spiritual practice or understanding. It, you know, you it makes me, what you shared, the feeling I got is that seems to me what you're talking about is like, we see things, but there's, you know, I have certain colors in my lens of that I'm looking at in life. And spirituality is kind of removing the color of the lens, even though I may be attached to that color, I really like looking through rose colored glasses or lavender or whatever color I like, but still there's going to be at times when that color doesn't allow me to see clearly. And then I may step into something that I don't wish to step into. And I only notice it after I've stepped into it. So maybe 
we can find a way to see a little more in advance and a little more objectively so that I don't step into the places that I, it doesn't have to be dangerous. It could just be unpleasant. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking when we say see and not see, um, I was thinking, can I enter every conversation without the uh, intention of seeing certain things or not seeing certain things? Just go plain. You know, because often, you know, before engaging in any conversations, you have an idea of what you want. So perhaps it's, I don't know, I'm still thinking, you know, just enter into things and activities more plain. That's like a well, it's almost like a child is that they're not perceiving the event and that allows them to improvise and to, you know, you said playing, but it also sounds like play, you know, that <laughs> I, I play through my actions. It's, it's just, and this is part of a spiritual model that we hear, it's just a game. And, mm -hmm. and I forget because I'm taking the game so seriously that it matters to me like I'm winning, you know, and it's, it has nothing to do with winning. It has to do with enjoying and, and playing the game and it's how you play the game. Mm. Yeah. Maybe hold on to respect or certain fundamental things that no matter what, there should be respect or no matter what, there should be love. And then you're not well, busy into it. See, it's yeah. just that, see, if that's, we you know, we're learning that that's the natural quality of each and every being is, is love. And so mm -hmm. when I'm not experiencing that, somehow I've gotten off the natural and it's, it's not something that I have to learn. It, it's something that I have to remove. And so what's the big deal? You know, this is, this is my main game is removing these little specks in my vision that aren't really serving me or anyone else. And I don't have to worry about other people, the way they're looking at me, because I've learned that they're not even looking, you know, they're, they're mm -hmm. not even seeing like what you said earlier, they didn't even notice any of the things that you were experiencing. That's, so I never, that's true. That, I yeah, I mean, I was just, that's so true. And I was just seeing that how people are so engaged in their story, their, you know, their side of things. And what I add to that is, uh, you know, there's a small window where they may be open to actually listening and the rest, they just want to express. <laughs> so maybe if I see that window, I could add. I, but you've, if I, don't I think things, you've stumbled onto the answer it is <sighs> that when I am listening the the generosity of listening and not projecting my story then i'm able to see when that window of opportunity is there because i wasn't over involved and then everyone is happy you know the, mm. and then the right thing will come out of my mouth at the right time because that's the game that's what i'm playing i'm playing that so see, we're stumbling upon it just through honest chatting. Yeah. Hey, I think, we, and that's <laughs> almost enough. You know, the absorption level of all people is just a small window. And that's another thing I've learned <laughs> through these chats. It's not about yeah. how long yeah. it is. It's got, a, it's brief. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe you want to share one more thing. And then if you would, take us through a little a meditation commentary to kind of coagulate and solidify a little bit what we've talked about to, so that I can find a way to put it into action. Okay, sure. I mean, thank you. I think it's a lovely exercise. I haven't given that time and space to myself. So um, it's, it's been a lovely chat and uh, let's, let's reflect or just. Okay. So maybe as I sit, I just observe the lovely new uh, perspectives that have come in front of me. 
uh, it could be different for each one of us. But for me, how this chat was a reminder that yes, I'm seeing. And even as I see myself getting absorbed in things that I don't need to be absorbed, it's a deeper learning. And when I come out of that, my capacity to see has perhaps increased. And when I get back to these conversations, these exchanges, I could be using that same energy um, just beautifully listening, uh, perhaps looking for that little window, or just being absorbed um, in the quality or something beautiful the person in front of me is presenting. And when I come back to my silent time, I can be more playful and more accepting of my patterns, perhaps smile at them or laugh at them and continue playing the game. And I think that lightness will continue to bring more transformations. So my seeing and not seeing can be directed more beautifully. And perhaps those small windows can be more meaningful for those around me. So I think I can be more gentle, more loving. And this realization could come after being less gentle. So that's okay. Everything is okay with spirituality. Nothing is wrong. Not too wrong. So no matter what, you can gently come back to a nourishing space. Well, these are some of my reflections. Maybe you have different ones. But enjoy. Enjoy these reflections, journey. And have this conversation with your own self. So, yeah. Om Shanti. Om Shanti to that. See, I feel better already. <laughs> so it's so wonderful to learn, you know, and, and learning is really, you know, is joy, you know, that I can tell I've learned when, when joy kind of starts to emerge, because I see that, oh, it's, this is the, this is the way, you know, this is the way to, so in today, the way for me to see, and uh, thank you for putting it all you absorbed it all very quickly. I, you, your meditation well, was like an essence you for... of. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I told you, I did come into this conversation with many things, but I think that's the beauty of these conversations. So I knew I was going to arrive at something beautiful. You know, I felt that too. You know, <laughs> so thank thank you so much for making the extra effort to make the connection, so we could get together today. So Absolutely. bye to you bye. and bye to anyone else yeah. who might listen. See, no one might not even listen, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. See, it's okay. Mm -hmm. This is for me and, and for you. All right. Om Shanti. Thank you. Om Shanti. Bye.